How's it going everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today I'm going to be counting down the top 10 most valuable Canadian dime errors that you can find whether it's in your pocket change, coin roll hunting, or maybe you get a collection handed down to you. For some reason, dimes seem to be the most requested denomination to make these videos about on my channel. I'm not exactly sure why that is. It may be because they are so common to receive in your change. Maybe people have dimes just sitting around and they wanna know what they are worth. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the valuable dime errors that you can identify, how to identify them, and how much they can be worth. But before I do start this video off, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to see more coin collecting content just like this. And then without further ado, what do you say we get into this and we break down the top 10 most valuable Canadian dime errors. Let's get it. Now, as I start this list off, as per usual, I'm going to work my way from the least valuable dime being number 10 all the way up to the most valuable being number one. In the past, I've made several videos detailing all of the rare and valuable Canadian coins that you can find, as well as some of the rare and valuable Australian and American coins. I'm going to be making many more videos in the future covering British, German, and coins from around the world. So make sure to stay tuned for those and to hit that thumbs up on this video and that bell notification so you can see as my videos are being released. But what do you say we start this list off with number 10, which is going to be the year 2000 dime with a missing DH. Now this error is quite controversial and can be pretty tricky to identify. Basically to find the DH on Canadian coins, you have to look to the left of the base of the Queen's bust. And if you look from any of the coins around the year 2000 with the crowned tiara portrait, then basically if it is missing the DH, it may get this attribution. I've seen quarters as well that can get the missing DH attribution. But in terms of the 2000 missing DH dime, it can be worth up to $75 for an MS66 example. Number nine is going to be the 1953 no shoulder fold with a double date 1953. Now for most of the Canadian coin denominations throughout the years of 1953 to 1955, there exist shoulder fold and no shoulder fold varieties. The easiest way to be able to identify it is basically to look at the I in DEI. If it has flared out serifs at the end of the I, then it is a no shoulder fold. And if it is straight and blunt, then it is a shoulder fold. So if you have the flared out serifs and you can identify machine doubling on the date, this dime can be worth up to $80 for an MS64 example. Now, usually when it comes to low grade examples of these coins, you will be able to fetch a couple bucks above spot price when it comes to silver, but usually not too much more than the actual melt value. And when it comes to more recent dimes, you can sometimes get a dollar or two, but usually it's only the holy grails that carry a huge premium at the bottom of the Sheldon scale. Number eight is going to be a very recent Canadian dime, and this is actually one that I decided to throw in there. Now the 2021 single date Canadian dime is quite rare. They made four varieties of dime in Canada for 2021, and if you can find a 2021 with just the single date, now this means not a double date. This will not have the 1921 to 2021 double date. It will simply have the single date on it. Now, if you were able to find one of these in a high mint state condition and it actually had any error, you may be able to get some really good money for it. It can be worth around $92 for an MS67 without any error attributions, but if you were able to find doubling or maybe a grease error or strike through, it could definitely add a massive premium. So that is definitely one to look out for. I have had people asking me if they should crack open their mint rolls of newer dimes and in most cases I say no unless you have a box of these 2021 single date dimes then you might want to consider cracking open a couple rolls just to check for errors because you can make some really good money off of it. Number seven on this list is going to be the 1968 Canadian dime and this is actually going to be one of the non-silver variations. Now for the year 1968 when the Canadian mint 
was switching up the composition from silver to nickel. They became a little bit overwhelmed, so they actually contracted the Philadelphia Mint in the United States to produce some dimes and planchettes for them. And there is actually a way to identify the difference. Basically, you have to look at the reading around the edge of the coin. The Philadelphia Mints will be smaller and more defined, and the Ottawa will be thicker, and there will basically be less reading on it. Now, when it comes to value, the 1968 Philadelphia Mint can actually be worth up to $425 for an MS66 example. I have found Mint State 1968 nickel dimes in my coin roll hunts before, and I have held on to them. So if I was able to identify it as a Philadelphia, it might be worth to send off to be graded to a company like ICCS or maybe just maybe even PCGS if it can score in that high grade range. Number six is going to be the Canadian 1951 dime with a double die date on it. Now you are looking on the reverse and basically you are looking for machine doubling on the date. It can be on any of the numbers, but it will be most significant and valuable if it occurs on all of the numbers on the date 1951. In terms of value, it can be worth around $2 and an AG, which is at the bottom of the Sheldon scale, and that is right around melt value. So like I said, unless it is a holy grail, most of the time these do not carry huge premiums when they are in a low grade state. But when it comes to the higher grade states, this can actually be worth up to $441 when it starts to hit the high MS range. Number five is the 1956 dot dime. Now this is extremely infamous amongst Canadian collectors as being a notable dime variety. Many have sifted through thousands of dollars in Canadian dimes of hopes of being able to find this variety. I myself have found several 1956s through scrap silver purchases and still have not been able to find one, but that's not saying maybe one day I will get my chance. But to identify this bad boy, basically what you need to do is look at the bottom of the date in between the numbers nine and five and identify either a little die chip or cud that resembles a dot. Now it is a pretty pronounced dot and it looks like it might have been put there on purpose, but most likely it was not, it is just an error. Now when it comes to value, the 1956 dot can be worth around $2 for an AG at the bottom of the Sheldon scale. So that is right around melt value, you're not getting too much more than the actual spot price, even for this rare variety. But when you start getting up to the high end of the Sheldon scale, it can be worth up to $805 for an MS66 example. Number four is the 1938 Canadian dime with a double 1938. So with machine doubling on the date. Now this doubling can occur on any of the numbers or all of them for the date 1938, but it will be most valuable and significant if it is on the entire date. Now, in terms of value, it can be worth around $2 for an AG, which is at the bottom of the scale, so right around spot price, but this dime can actually be worth up to $1,570 for an MS65. So this is another pretty notable variety when it comes to the George the VI era of Canadian dimes. A good one to look for if you find 38s and also 39s. That's another one that has this variety as well. Number three on this list is going to be the 2000p Canadian dime. Now, if you have ever seen any of my coin roll hunts, I will bring up many, many times the bread and butter of Canadian nickel hunting is the 2000p nickel. Now, it is extremely low mintage, minted somewhere around 5 million. It was actually put out into circulation and meant to be put out, but the 2000p Canadian quarter and dime definitely were not meant to be put out into circulation. They were actually issued to vending machine companies for testing, and I believe somewhere around 100 or less examples are known to exist out there. So if you do find one of these and it happens to be in a high grade state, it can be a true unicorn and holy grail when it comes to Canadian coins and especially dimes. Now, in terms of value, you can definitely get some decent money, even if it is in a low grade state, people are gonna wanna pay for it just because you don't see these things every day. You don't come across them too often and you are not meant to find these things in circulation. So you can definitely get probably anywhere from 50 to $100 for a low grade state. But if you can get one of these bad boys in an MS67, it can be worth all the way up to $2,000. $290 for the 2000p Canadian dime. 
Number two on this list is going to be the 1939 Canadian Dime with a double 1939 date. Now, just like the 1938 that I mentioned earlier on this list, to identify this variety, basically you want to look for machine doubling on the date of 1939. It can occur on any of the numbers or all of them, but it will be most valuable and significant if you have doubling on the entire date. Now, in terms of value, it is actually not worth too much in a low-grade state, right around $2, but it can actually be worth all the way up to $2,450 when it starts to hit the high MS range. Well, guys, we have made it to number one on this list. I really hope you guys enjoy these videos, and I hope you find them helpful in your coin collecting journeys. I was definitely a little bit overwhelmed when I first started coin collecting and coin roll hunting. I didn't really know what to look for and how to identify those truly rare coins that can actually make you money. And a lot of the time, people just end up holding on to stuff that is not worth a whole lot more than face value, and you might as well just end up turning it back into the bank. That's probably what you're going to do one day. But this dime that is number one on this list, I have covered it many, many times in the past, and it should come as no surprise. Anyone that makes a top video on Canadian dimes should definitely include this one, and that is the 1969 large date dime. Now, there are two different varieties for the year 1969. There is a small date and a large date, and the large date is definitely a holy grail when it comes to not only Canadian dimes, but Canadian coins in general. It can be worth big, big money, and actually, I have found a trick to identify it that makes it very easy. So basically, what I suggest is if you find any Canadian 1968 dimes, that you hold on to them and use it for a reference, because the date on a 1968 dime is actually very similar in size to how a 1969 large date dime would look. Now, the 1969 small date is quite small and it is pretty significant in terms of a size difference from the 1968. So you should be able to tell pretty easily, but if the date looks around the same size as that 1968, then you may have yourself one extremely viable Canadian dime because this thing can be worth all the way up to $21,900 for an AU50. So that is just above the middle of the Sheldon scale. If you were able to find one of these and it scored in the MS range, it would be worth huge, huge money. I think one of these may have sold in the past in a higher grade state. I am not too sure. The information that is provided to me Today is from the Coins in Canada website. That is the information guide I like to use for these videos currently. They update their prices daily and they just have lots of information when it comes to varieties and errors. So they are the reference that I like to use in terms of these videos. If you guys would like any more information, I definitely suggest going and checking out their website at coinsandcanada.com. But that is just about going to do it for this one, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up and please subscribe if you would like to see more just like this. I would also like to announce that I have partnered with the company Atmex. They are one of the largest precious metals dealers in North America and they have a website with a massive selection and inventory ranging from everything from bars, bullion, hand poured pieces. They have New Zealand Mint licensed products like Star Wars, Marvel, Harry Potter. So if you would like to shop one of the best selections of precious metals and also support my channel at the same time, then just click the link down in the description below for Atmex's website. But that's it for today, folks. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, y'all.